What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine. We're back out here to get this sailboat up today. And I want to show you kind of what we're dealing with here. As you can tell, the sailboat itself is actually still tied to the dock itself. And one of the reasons we try our best not to work off docks, if I pan the camera around here, you'll see as I stand on the dock here, it's going to slowly start to sink down. Now that's about an extra 195 pounds that I'm putting weight on the dock, let alone the fact that the sailboat is already been pulled down. But if my dad walks over here, you'll see the dock actually goes underwater. And that's just simply with him standing here and with me standing here. Now, if we get the compressor unit and the generator and all that up here, all that weight working on the dock is simply just gonna make it sink. As you can see, he walks away. As I start to walk away, the dock comes back up. So that's why we bring our boat out here. You can see one of our salvage boats here. And a lot of people ask us, well, when you do these recoveries off a dock, why do you still have a boat? Even here at our facility, we don't want to put too much weight on our floating docks because it'll allow that boat and the dock to go under. And any of our equipment, say our compressor unit over here, which is what we run the bags off of, um, it'll just simply take it underwater and it would kind of be pointless for us there. But we're going to get some cameras set up. We're going to try to do a time lapse video for you today as well. That way you can see the whole entire process. And we're also going to get you some plenty of underwater footage and I'll commentate through it as well. But let me get the camera set up. We're going to jump in. We got to do an inspection of the hull, see if we can figure out what made the sailboat sink. And then of course, we're going to put some bags up underneath it, lift it, and then do the donning task of of course, pumping all the water out. But come along with us and we'll see how successful we are. All right, guys, the first part of this dive is just to do an investigation of the boat itself to see if we can find out what made it sink. Uh, once we get our bearings here, we're going to go up underneath it. We're going to check the hull, and we're just going to start here at the stern, work our way all the way up to the bow. We're really going to check around the keel area, too. The owner did say that he had bottomed the boat out. Uh, so we got some strong suspicions that the keel, right where it connects to the hole or whatnot, we do have a suspicion that it is cracked or there's some possible holes in it. Um, but that's what we're actually looking for. But as we go up underneath here, uh, basically that's, that's what it is. As I exhale, one of the techniques I use is when I exhale, I let my bubbles there kind of go up against the boat and if I see those bubbles go into the boat then I know that there's a hole in there in some way shape or form so that's what I'm looking at here I'm just looking for holes and cracks anywhere in the hole uh, the camera should go over to the other diver so here's the other divers view and we're basically looking now here's the actual keel of the vessel and so we're looking at cracks right where the keel connects to the hull of the boat and I'm not sure how much the camera is going to see for you but we could clearly see the cracks in it um, and we can usually tell too if repairs have been done whether it's a good repair or bad repair uh, we believe that the history of this vessel there were several repairs done in the past where they didn't do that good of a job and either the welds or the um, sealant that they used didn't work very well because uh, it was clear to us that there was actually quite a bit of damage done to the hull of this vessel but we're going to continue on. We're going to work all the way up to the bow, and then we'll come up and we'll let uh, the surface guy know exactly what our findings are. Um, still haven't decided at this point if we're going to keep the vessel or uh, try to repair the vessel or what we're going to do with it. But as we come up to the top, we'll go from there. we've determined uh, pretty much what made the boat sink we're going to go ahead and we're going to do some rigging on this vessel so that we can get it to the surface and basically what we're doing here is we're just taking down our lift bags these are two 2,000 pound lifts from sub salve uh, we did end up using uh, one 1,000 pound bag just as a stabilization bag however what we're going to do with these two is we've already got a strap system that goes in between them to basically create a cradle or a cradle 
And we're going to take it up. And we're going to kind of center it around the keel so that there's a bag on each side. And then once it's centered up, we'll radio up to the surface and we'll tell them to go ahead and add a little bit of air to kind of lock them into place. And they should have a nice little cradle system that kind of holds that boat steady. And then once we're out of the way, they'll go ahead and throw the air to it, lift it on up to the surface, and then uh, we should be able to start the pumping process. Now, you may hear some talking here or there, and basically that's just us talking to the surface guy uh, through our comms unit, or it could be us talking back and forth to each other as well. So if you hear talking throughout this, that's kind of mumbled. Uh, it's actually clearer to us than what you guys are going to hear because it's coming through the comms. All right, guys, so we're going to try something a little unorthodox here. As I walked across the boat, we noticed we was going to take, go ahead and unhook the bag. And one thing we noticed is if we stand on the bow, the whole stern will actually pop up. Now, unfortunately, I don't weigh enough for the whole thing to come up. So we're going to put two people up here on the front. That's going to lift the stern up enough. Of course, our pump will definitely pump out enough water. But we're going to need to get it balanced. So we're going to put somebody else over here on the end. I may not be able to get this recorded for you guys because it's going to take all three of us to do it. But this prevents us from having to get back in the water and reposition the bag. Once we have the gunnels back here in the back completely out, this pump will actually be doing its job. And of course, this boat will float on its own. So bear with us real quick. Let us see if we can get this set up. If not, I'll show you some more underwater footage. All right, guys, so we decided to do something a little bit different. We're able to lash the boat off to the dock. We're pulling the mast to help roll it for us. We actually deflated this bag a little bit to help kind of switch it over. We've done this for a couple reasons. Anytime you do work, you always want to do the easiest and simplest method. This prevents one of us having to actually get back under the water and having to run straps and all that. We've actually got both gunnels out of the water. Now it's just up to the pump, how fast it can pump. We are going to leave us here on the bow temporarily to help kind of push it down to help get some of that water run back. But hopefully this will work. Maybe within an hour or so, she should be up floating on her own and we'll have quite a bit of water out. So it's a hurry up and wait game at this point, but I think we got her knocked out. All right, guys, so we got her up. She's floating now. All we're waiting on is a trailer. We're going to pull her out, see if we can find the hole in. We've got to get our bags out. We're going to try to do it without jumping back in the water. So we're going to get it drug over here, drop the air in one, and hopefully we can pull it out from underneath it. But uh, yeah, very successful time or salvage here. Hopefully we can figure out what made it sink to begin with. I know we found some holes and cracks in the bottom. Whether or not that was the total cause of it, who knows, but we'll get that. We'll find that out once we get it out on the trailer. We're going to get our bags out. We're going to tow it over with another boat, get it on the trailer, and I'll give you some final thoughts at the end of this.
All right, guys, so we got the boat out of the water, and of course, we found an excessive amount of damage down up underneath it. We have found the holes in the bottom. Uh, just from you know our suspicions alone, it was around the kill area. That's what we saw when we was under there. But if you look at the water here, you'll see plenty of water. Now, the kill was actually broke. It was what we couldn't really tell until we got it up. But you'll see all the water just pouring out of that bottom of that boat. So this boat's really not going to be salvaged for anything as far as we're concerned with. Uh, I'm not even sure that the owners are even going to want to do anything with it. So it'll probably be scrapped out at the most. Uh, may even be a new dive site. Who knows? But guys, that's the realities of doing salvage work. Sometimes they go as planned. Sometimes they don't. Um, if you got any questions on this, please put it down in the comment section below and we'll try to answer your questions the best I can. I really hope this video come out uh, clear cut as far as the visibility. I know the visibility under the water was not all that good, but this is how we do salvage work, guys. We plan it out, we see how much lift we need, we hook them up, we do our inspection dive or our investigation dive, and we hook it up, lift it, pump it out, and then tow it back around. But as you can see, we finally got it out of the water. We found way too much excessive damage for us to even want to try to repair it. And I really doubt that the owner is going to want to repair it as well. So like I said, it'll probably be scrapped out or who knows, maybe a new virgin wreck here in Lake Hickory. So we'll see how that goes. But guys, if you like this video, smash that like button and definitely share it as well. Once again, if you got any questions, put it down in the comment section below. But as always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.